Haunt me is where you feel comfortable. There's no judgment, happy, warm, the right people around you. The English, I love it here. If I wasn't raised here, I don't know what way I would have turned out, would I be the same man I am today? So where I am now and where I've come from is a big defining factor in the person I am today. When, when I first found mixed martial arts, I was a young, skinny, anxious kid. Didn't have much gone for me in my own head, you know what I mean? I, I didn't really feel like I was going to be the, the coolest guy in the block, you know what I mean? I didn't think I was going to be successful in any way. So when I joined this sport, uh, I forced, you know, from a kid who went through thinking all these things about myself to suddenly thinking, oh, I'm good at this. I mean, I, I can be good at this. And I know my mentality is where like work hard and see the results. So this sport gave me the hope to eventually make something of myself in whatever way it was. If it was going to be having a good fighting career or else just maturing into a into a decent human being. I was just, so be it. I was just taking it all on board. So luckily enough, I got a good career out of it. And still, st still, I'm going, and uh, I'm not the worst person either. I, I'm, I'm, I've been moulded into a kind of respectful, uh, humble, and just down to earth person who doesn't think too much of himself and just loves the sport he does. When I was on my game in era, at the time I was mad game, or I was, uh, I came across the uh, UFC 2009 game and. I thought it was just the fucking coolest thing ever, you know what I mean? I, I was intrigued by all the martial arts, like how I could pick... I, I was big into Brock Lesnar because I was man to WWE, so I just loved picking Brock Lesnar as a heavyweight, going in, double-legging people and beating the shit out of them on the ground with the ground his, his heavy hands. And I, then I just thought to myself, like, why not? Why not give this a go? It looks it looks really cool. When I made me my created fighter, I oh, yeah, made him a jiu-jitsu guy and I saw it, it's like dummies used to do the moves played out before so you can understand what move it was and I was like right I'm intrigued by that I started getting into it, I started following the UFC then and then I made the made the decision then to just join the sport then like so I've come a long way since then now like just from playing the Playstation game so it's mad just <laughs> a young mind that was curious got drawn into this life you know what I mean it's it's funny and it's cool as hell at the back of it all like Smackdown on a Friday, I used to get a Chinese every Friday with my mad. That was their Friday routine, a Smackdown on <laughs> a Chinese. Uh, and now it's at the leading into <laughs> training on a weekend and eating chicken and rice. Complete different scenario nowadays, but uh, stop. I, I'm more intrigued now with the sport than I was back then, which is, you wouldn't even think that because you now when you're young and ambitious, you have all this, this uh, desire to do, to do good things and stuff like that. Now I still had a bit of that desire with me, that like that excitement, but I just think with the maturity of me now and uh, understanding that I'm, st I'm actually really only starting my journey now as a pro. Like you do all the amateur stuff, you, you you get yourself into this position, but I'm really actually only starting now, and this is why I'm more excited now because I know that all the work I put into up until now has got me to here, and now here is where I take it up a notch. You know what I mean? And really show what I'm about and show what I've been working on over the last ten years, eleven years, and show that. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm one of the best mismatch liars in Ireland, if not Europe, you know what I mean? And that's that's what I want to show. Then take it from Europe to the world and you know what I mean, try try really show that what we're doing over here is uh is just as good as anywhere in the world like. The Irish MMA scene has a big part to play in uh, who I am and going to these local shows from a young age and uh, mingling with the other teams, mingling with coaches. You know, sussing out your your competition. You know what I mean? It's all part of the process of it, and it's um, a main part of the of my of my journey anyway. Because I fought so locally and on the regional scene for so long. Uh, I actually Lee Hammond was actually my nemesis growing up. We are like the two. We always competed against each other in jiu jitsu, and he used to always whoop me. I think I bet him once, and he whooped me all the other times. Uh, so now I'm trying with him. Like it's funny how it goes. I fought Kieran Clark, an amateur. I'm sharing the match with him. I fought Richie Smullen at amateur. I'm sharing the match with him. I fought Pavel Politiwo at pro. I'm sharing the match with him. You know, so there's a lot to be said for what mixed martial arts or martial arts does for, look, just, you know what I mean, the people that it's a, that's involved in it. And I think uh, it's one of those sports where you think it has a bit of a bad name in terms of, uh, like, it's a rough sport and this and that. But, you know, some of the most... No humble, nicest people I've ever met are from this sport and 
and I was I now I will still continue to meet more but I just love the whole side of it that like you can it just it's 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 purely competition based, there's no egos, we're here to fight and then after our mates, you know what I mean? Most of my mates from martial arts, funny enough, I, I've actually fought the likes of Jack Maguire down in Cork. I fought him and his brother Aaron in amateur. Sure, I went I drove down three hours to Cork to train down one of the days they let me stay in his he's let me stay in his house for fuck's sake, like and do a bit of training the next morning. So that goes to show you how like like well knitted we are together as as former foes but now friends, you know what I mean? It's I just love the whole kind of social aspect of it as well. It's fucking cool. Like there's no way, no hard feelings with with anyone. It's just getting in, doing the business, and then after that, after you do the business and have your fight, you have a, a memory to share. You know what I mean? With the with the person who you fought with, whether it be good or bad, it's it's a memory and. Uh, Long made the memories keep coming, you know what I mean? I'm in this for the long haul now, so like I said, I've met most of my friends from the sport, from fighting them, so and I'm sure I will continue to meet more and uh, gain a load of more new uh, friends and new contacts over the, over the next few years going forward. It's, it's cool to kind of lead the way in terms of the, the pro ranks. I remember when I was an amateur, and I always thought, you know, one day that'll be me, and suddenly now it is me, and I'm looking at all the young guys who are probably thinking the same things that I was thinking back then now, and you know what I mean? It's just exciting to see the, the future, showing my talent is, is really in this country, and the future of Irish MMA is, is in safe hands, I think, now. There's a lot of young, good talent coming up. Uh, the experienced guys now are really starting to uh, develop the game and show what about on a European or an international stage so it's in good hands and I'm looking forward to being a part of the how you'd say Conor McGregor came in and, and, and really boosted us up from his stint in the UFC and stuff like that so now it's I think it's up to us now to kind of carry that, that flame on and bring Irish MMA to where it, it deserves to be and show what we're like from this nation and show how good and skilled fighters we are I, I want to be that guy I'm training jiu-jitsu 11 years now. I'm training MMA. You could say the same. I know a lot of the time I didn't. Uh, I just did jiu-jitsu. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I've been doing the same things over and over again every day for the last 11 years. So I'm more in tune now with who I am, with who I want to be, and just with what path I'm on. And I'm, I'm actually fortunate to know that I found something I want to do for the rest of my life. I know a lot of people flow through life they don't know what's meant for them and they're they're always worrying like what do, what's the next step for me how do I take it to what, what, like how do I achieve things and how do I do this thing I am fortunate that I will always have fighting to fall back on you know what I mean if, if all else in the world is bad for me I will have fighting to fall back on and you know what I mean like, like they say if you love something you never work a day in your life and I fully believe that that's my life now like I'm just set on this path no outside influence will take me off it. This is what I'm meant to do, and I'm just going to do it until the day I die. That's simple as. I knocked out Roger in nine seconds. After that fight, I said to myself, oh, Jesus, I, I, got, I got lucky there, you know what I mean? Like, when did you ever get them shots? It was a lucky lucky thing, and then I was saying to myself, no, do you know what? I'm actually a fucking animal. That wasn't luck. That was me being being sharp and composed on the night, and, uh, like, taking full advantage of them small gaps, you know what I mean? Them, them exchanges where... It matters that I'm sharper than him, and that's what it comes down to. And I was like, no, you know what? Fuck it. I think I'm lucky. I'm actually, I'm actually a good fighter. You know what I mean? And then since then, I've actually started just to keep bigging myself up, bigging myself up. Not to the point where I'm just filling my ears full of nonsense. You know what I mean? But enough that to keep me motivated and keep me, uh, keep me like my self belief in a good position. You know what I mean? And and once I'm like that, and I'm strong and I'm stable. I'm a dangerous man, as I said. You know what I mean? Once I'm happy, I would not want to fight me. I mean, because I'm calm, composed, and I, uh, like I said, I bring two cylinder blocks for hands, you know what I mean? And I'm really looking forward to showing this type of fighter that I am now in the best headspace I've ever been in, in the MMA scene, and really show what I'm capable of doing, you know what I mean?
I always thought the worst, that, like leading up the fights, that I do enough work and that I do enough. Work. I always put in the work, you know what I mean? But my inner critic, as you say, was always wanting more, want because I'm a perfectionist as as it is. I try to set out and excel in everything I do, no matter where it is, no matter what it is. Uh, that's just my personality. So my critic would have been my worst downfall from maybe my teenage years, from like 17 to like I'd even go as far as 22. It's really only over the last two years I've matured to. You know what I mean? Control my mind. I've read a lot of books on psychology, and I say a lot of books. One book, <laughs> I literally read one book on psychology. I think I know everything. Like I did learn a lot from that book, and I learned how to understand my brain, why I'm thinking the way I'm thinking, and you know what I mean. Learn that when I am thinking the negative thoughts or the bad thoughts, the, criti- the criticism style thoughts, that it's just my nerves acting out, and my brain trying to find like the easy way out, and and. Now I have a level of control over that, whereas the minute I have a thought like that, I'm like, shut the fuck up, you know what I mean? I just thought, yeah, trying to wimp out with things more or less, but now my critic is is, uh, is non-existent, I think. I'm more, I'm more tuned in with, my, with myself than I've ever been. I feel like I'm more mature than I've ever been, and I feel like, as well as me progressing every day and all that jazz, I'm just enjoying me training, I'm enjoying the life I'm living, you know what I mean? Why? Should I keep putting myself down and trying to build myself back up and I can just always love myself and believe in what I'm doing is the right things to do and let the calmness and maturity show on the night on my fights that like this is someone who knows what they're at, this is someone who's as cool as a cucumber and this is someone who, who you should be afraid of, you know what I mean? That's what I wanna wanna like set out and want people to see that I'm calm, collected and I'm a dangerous motherfucker on the night, you know what I mean? And that's that's really what mindset I'm in now to to show off to people and uh, I think it's it's gone well so far. Well I didn't know how much my life was revolved around MMA until I didn't have it anymore, you know what I mean? So when I say I didn't have it, I took a step away, uh, focused on my Jiu Jitsu, but the competition was really what kept me in check, you know what I mean? It kept me, like, how I'd say, disciplined. That's the only way I can really say it. I think I felt like I couldn't, I wasn't as disciplined unless I was fighting. And uh, when I wasn't fighting then, my discipline started to to become non-existent. I was going out, like obviously training, miss, missing one session a week, then it became two, then it became three. You know, not acting like myself, going out, drinking, partying, coming home at all hours in the morning and really losing sight of what person I first was, you know what I mean? And what morals and goals I had set for myself, because I had a high standard for myself from a young age and I, and I had like, like how you'd say I had a, a, a perfect vision of how I wanted myself to be and then over time I lost that vision so that was very hard for for me to deal with because I knew I wasn't the person who I once was or wanted to be and I started to you know what I mean get a bit depressed I w- wouldn't leave the room I didn't really speak about it to my mates either like that I kept it all in kept it all in my family you know what I mean? I'm not really born for drinking at home. I started like drinking at home and all like that's just not my buzz. And that's when I was like kind of really started to uh, to feel like I wasn't going in the right direction. And uh, fortunately for me, one night I had a bit of a like how you say an ultimatum with myself of where am I going? What am I doing with myself? Um, I. I can't say it was a suicidal thought, but I didn't, I didn't have the best of hopes for my future. We'll say, you know what I mean. I just didn't think there was a point in me being here. I was just gonna keep feeling shit all the time. And luckily enough for me, I after I had that thought, I just you know something switched inside my brain and just I almost scared myself into, you know what I mean, making the right decisions in life. Uh, from then on, I was like, right, I need to work on myself. I took it day by day. You know, I had a a lot of bad days that I just thought oh, I'll just go back to square one but I kept kept the, the right approach and I just kept uh, kept believing that I will be better one day you know what I mean and just kept going through day to day getting through each day it felt like the same day over and over again and then I had one good day and then I was like oh I'm having a good day today I didn't have one of these in a good world and then one good day became maybe two or three and certain things in my life were starting to work out better for myself and I was starting to see positive things after seeing negative for so long and when I started seeing the positive things then I just I was just right I want more of it I started thinking positively uh, I started bigging myself up more I started putting more focus into things that actually mattered in my life I started to uh, 
assess what time I was giving to people in terms of, I don't mean that the people who I was around were bringing me down, I mean that was it relevant to my goals? And a lot of it wasn't. So then I started putting out all that shit, focus more on myself, and slowly over time built myself up to a point where I was comfortable to be me again. I mean, I'm comfortable to be someone who was proud of what they do, proud of where they came from, and who had one ultimate thing, which was the main factor of my life, was a, a dream and a goal to be a champion in MMA and to really show that I can do it. And then, you know, with the, like I said, the right people around me, uh, with self-belief, I got there in the end. And from being in a position where I didn't even want to be here anymore to winning a pro featherweight title over the space of two, three years, you know what I mean? It's kind of a real, like, declaration that it can be done and uh, no matter how hard life is uh, everyone deserves to be happy and I believe everyone has the right to be happy it's just a matter of how you put yourself in the best positions in life to be to be happy you know what I mean if you're really negative on yourself bringing yourself down and all this jazz give out about everything you're not going to find the opportunity to be happy because you're not thinking about happy things whereas when you cut out the shit that's dragging you down and focus on you and your growth specifically and you know what I mean what you want to do with yourself you'll start to see a clearer picture of the person you are and the person you want to be or else even the person who you were and I have a clearer picture now of the person of who I am now compared to two three years ago I was a negative person fuck this fuck this fuck everything you know what I mean now I'm the complete opposite I you know what I mean all I, all I really do is think positively I don't really think about the things that like I said, the outside influences, the, the naysayers, the haters, the people who try to bring it down. I don't think about any of that stuff anymore because it's all irrelevant to me. You know what I mean? Nothing matters to me but training, keeping my friends happy, keeping my family happy, and keeping myself happy. You know what I mean? So there's a lot to be said for meditation, um, reading, reading stuff, understanding the mind, uh, surrounding yourself with the right people, and just believing in yourself. You know what I mean? I think they're the key, the key things in life that will get you, you know what I mean, to a place where you, you, you want to be. And thankfully, I've been in a position where I can say I've been in that bad position and now I'm here. So I listen to what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to, I'm not like that guy, oh, believe in, you know what I mean? That super guy who tries to just sell you a story. I'm, I'm telling you a story that actually happened and it's real because I went from having no confidence at all and not believing in myself one bit to suddenly having all this confidence over three years of hard work and believing in myself to get to where I am now, you know what I mean? It wasn't easy, I had a lot of bad days, more bad days than good days, but now we're, having the, now we're having the good days, you know what I mean? And it's great that we're having the good days because I, I didn't see, two, three years ago, I did not see how my life was going to be in this way now because of how negative I thought, you know what I mean? So now I'm in this good spot and long may it last, I'm, I'm so ha excited about my future, I'm so excited about what person I'm going to be in two, three years' time, what person I'm going to be in four to eight years' time, you know what I mean? Because every year I'm maturing and growing into a different, like, different person, I think, you know what I mean? I think every year, over the last two, three years, I've been, like, taking bits from different things and, you know what I mean, letting it resonate, what's good, what's bad, taking what's good, blocking out what's bad, and all that stuff. So it's really exciting to see your development as a person when you've seen yourself at your worst. So I was at my worst. Now I'm kind of at my best. Probably I could probably still go better over the next few years. I mean, but right now, what this is the best I've been in, in life up till now. It could get better. It could get worse. I don't know. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's gonna get better because that's where I like to think. So uh, yeah, this mental health is is something that I'm really uh, really drawn into, and I, I like to promote having good uh, positive mental health and you know uh, bringing good vibes around to everyone and. And just getting everyone who, like the teenagers who are coaching and stuff like that, to believe in themselves and see this is your escape. Believe in us, believe in yourself, and the world is your oyster. You know what I mean? The person I am now is sitting here in front of you. I wouldn't be that person if I didn't experience that shit. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't have the self belief, I wouldn't have the determination if I didn't go from the lowest to the lowest to the highest to the highest. You know what I mean? So, like, there's. Uh, what did he call it? Character building. You know what I mean? I think it was a good bit of character building, and I'm enjoying the character that I'm throwing into. You know what I mean? It's really, it's really starting to look up for me now, and I'm just drinking it all in. You know what I mean? And letting all the good times come, because you know I mean, I, like I said, I had so much bad times for so long that 
the good times, like I'm, I'm savoring it all. You know what I mean? I'm really, really enjoying it. I just have this want to do really good and be really successful and to just, you know what I mean? Do things like no one has ever seen.